What's up, everyone? This is Joseph Flahiff, and you are listening to How to Take Safe Risks, the Entrepreneur's Guide to Risky Business. All right, let's get started. Entrepreneurs look at risk differently than other people, and and we, as entrepreneurs, are always looking to come up with a, something different, something that's differentiated, something that is on the cutting edge that helps us be different than the rest of our competitors. Like it or not, there's always competitors. So uh, if you believe right now that you're in, you, your thing is so different that you don't have competitors, you need to think again because there's someone who is somewhat or considers themselves to be your competitor. So maybe you don't consider them a competitor because you're so different in XYZ. And we'll talk about ways to differentiate yourself in just a minute. But you need to understand that they see themselves as your competitor or they see you as a competitor to them. You're an alternative to people spending money with them. Therefore, you are a competitor. So you need to understand who those are. When I was first starting out, <laughs> I, can, I can see myself talking with a friend of mine. Uh, we were having coffee and she asked me, so who are your competitors in this market? And I said, well, nobody really, <laughs> which was just stupid. <laughs> I look at back on it and, oh, it's one of those cringeworthy moments. Don't think that. Don't think that you don't have competitors. You have competitors. So you need to be able to differentiate yourself from those competitors. And this is part of it. Uh, there are There's a lot of different ways of talking about innovation. But let me talk about three different types of innovation that we talk about. Uh, one is the incremental or sustaining innovation. Uh, this is the type of innovation that uh, you're taking a current technology and you're making a small incremental change to it. You're making it better. Um, you are doing just enough to uh, add a little bit more functionality to it to make it a little bit better. This is a deadly way to, um, to differentiate yourself. And the reason this is deadly is that there's nothing stopping your competitors from making that same little change and taking over. If you're just entering the market, they have the market share now, right now. Your job is to take that market share or create a new market that is different than everything else. That's happened, but uh, recognize you're taking market from somebody else, some way or another. And you need to be able to differentiate yourself in such a way that they can't copy you and incremental or sustaining innovation, or if you, if you currently have a business, this is, this is deadly, right? Um, this is from The Innovator's Dilemma. That's the whole premise of the, the book, The Innovator's Dilemma, is if you make just incremental changes, you will, uh, I think the quote was, you'll continue to get better and better at things people want less and less. And that's not a place you want to be because, uh, yeah, you'll soon be out of business. Next, customer-driven innovation. Important. Uh, it's a it's another variation on sustaining innovation. Uh, it's important to do once you've got a product in the market, you have to take feedback from your customers. But especially when you're starting, you don't want that to be the only thing that drives you customer questions, customer desires, customer questions, because that is that's it's no different than the sustaining uh, innovation. It, it's something that someone else can copy and probably is already thinking about copying. So again, it's deadly to do this customer-driven innovation. What you wanna do is uh, disruptive in innovation. Unfortunately, that's highly risky. So disruptive innovation is when you, when you take two different markets and combine them to make a completely new market, or you take uh, two different business models and you combine them to make a new business model or you take an existing business model and you change it in some way to make it possible to be that it's completely different from the existing and now you've created a, a new business model. There's a great book on this kind of innovation. It's called The Blue Ocean Strategy. Um, get it. It's worth reading. Uh, and the one of the tools in it that it talks about is this Blue Ocean Strategy canvas. So if you, there's, there are four changes that the, the Blue Ocean Strategy talks about. And they are, you want to increase something or decrease something, add something or remove something. 
And these, this is how you can, can innovate and, and differentiate yourself. So if you look at this dotted line here, say this is the, the ex existing company X. Company X was along the exact same kind of trajectory as everybody else. They call that in the book Red Ocean because it's bloody competition and everybody's chomping at everybody else to get their slice of the market share. <clears throat> You'll see here each one of these lines represents a, a different aspect of that business. So when you're doing this for yourself, look at these different aspects and maybe there's ones that you come up with that are different for your business. But think about architecture. You may have four different aspects of architecture that your, your industry thinks about. So if you're talking about cars, you can talk about um, the architecture might be the, the type of body structure, right? So that's the architecture. Uh, the chassis that it sits on might be what you call architecture. Uh, whether it's a um, internal combustion gas engine or diesel engine or a mixed hybrid type or a pure electric car that might be your architecture whatever the the base pieces are that so you may have like four or five different architecture columns and then features what are the features that are are common right if it's if you're talking about a, a company that makes screens computer screens right uh, it may be the the features are the dots per inch uh the lumens right how bright it is the size of the screen, the thickness of the screen, right? Those are features of that, that thing. Um, use, uh, the types of use, how is it used? So you may have different uh, ways that your product is used and you uh, would be different. They, those would be different categories, just like the different features. So different uses would you would come up with and then list those and and look at where each of your competitors is on the market customers what is your customer category how do you how do you group your customers same thing business models same thing and and then the other one is a is a create so now let's, let's go through the the models here if you if you look here each one of these is given a rating so whatever your scale is you, you're just coming up with a way of saying the company Competitor one is, oh, they're very close in color, is this color right here, the one that goes this way, this way, up above, right there, and then goes down. So that's competitor A. And then competitor B goes here. They're, they're not, not as good in their architecture. They've got a little bit more features than competitor, competitor one. <clears throat> they're not as uh, versatile or customers aren't as, uh, don't like their use. use. It's not, that's not their strong suit as much. Um, they're about as even as everybody on the customers and their business model is better. I don't know. It, it, it gets a rating. So you give them ratings on those different things. You come up with the rating system. And then you see here's, here's you, your old company. Doot, doot, doot. You know, meets there, meets there, goes down there. Right in the middle, except for maybe a little bit of gap here. They're right in the middle of this red ocean competing with their those two, two competitors so what do you do so in the blue ocean strategy you say okay what can we increase decrease add or remove now in this i actually showed increasing and decreasing everything some of the things you may leave the same so don't don't take that to, to mean you have to change everything you may leave 90 percent of it the same and just change one thing but that one thing is enough that completely changes it so you may be that you, you know, in here you can see I raised this one from this dotted line here all the way up here, from the dotted line here all the way up here. So you, you change the architecture, you get more points for your architecture, you get more points for your features. <clears throat> you completely change the use. It's totally, you, you completely eliminated that type of use. Maybe there's a different use that you came up with. Uh, and you reduced the, the, way the customers interact with it or something like that and you've reduced the, the the business model so you're you can see how it changes here now now this company really isn't in competition with all of this where this trajectory is kind of in this space here they go zhoo, completely different you see that and you added this thing over here so this is a create and i didn't do a delete so maybe you 
delete this or something, you know. So what are the, of all the things that you came, categories you came up with down here, what are the things that you're going to add, remove, increase, or decrease? Look at your business, look at your organization, and think about how are you going to differentiate yourself from your competition? This is where it gets really fun and creative. Uh, and you can take quite a bit of time doing this. Don't overthink it, but don't underthink it either. Don't think that this is just an easy snap judgment thing. You need to think about it and figure out how are you different? What is your differentiation? Because that's what makes you able to sell. Why should I buy you instead of competitor B? They've been in the market longer because you're an entrepreneur, you're just starting. So you have to have a compelling story to tell where people will believe and want to buy from you. They have to know you, they have to like you, and they have to trust you. So your story has to be good. It has to be one that they trust. All right, so you may have heard of the lean startup. We're gonna talk about uh, reducing risk here. Uh, the lean startup is one tool. So don't think that it's everything, please. There, there's other approaches and other models. Lean startups, just one. Uh, but there's some great thought in the lean startup model that I want you to have. So that's what we're going to talk about right now. Um, lean startup is a way of running a, a business start uh, that is quick and adaptable. It adapts to markets, changing technologies, changing customer needs helps you find the right place to build your business. Um, so uh, what it is, is a tool for you to use to look at your business, to look at the, your customers and your product or service and adapt so that you get a really good, what they call a product to market fit. You, you need to have your product or service be something that your market wants and needs you, um, it's very difficult to sell something that a market doesn't know it already needs or wants because you have to make two sales. First, you have to make the sale that you need this. And second, you have to make the sale that you need it from me. You need this, not just this category of product or service, but you need mine, right? So you want to do... <laughs> Just be ready for that if it happens. Yeah, I was gonna say you want to do things that are people already know they want, but not necessarily. You, you, you may just wanna be making something that's completely out of the blue that people go, oh my gosh, I never realized I needed that. Nobody realized they needed Facebook before Facebook was Facebook, right? They didn't realize they needed it, but once it was there, ho ho, then they really needed it. Uh, but you'll recognize that once the product is there, now we're adapting, right? They're, they're adapting Facebook to continually meet the customer's needs, to continually get better and better at Facebook's job, which is keeping people on Facebook so they can sell more ads. That's the way Facebook runs. That's the purpose. <clears throat> so what the Lean Startup isn't is it isn't the only way. Um, it isn't a silver bullet. Uh, it isn't something that you should just do without thinking about. So. Uh, it's a tool that you need to use to be aware of uh, and to, to think through as you're, as you're using it because you don't want to just dismiss it because, oh, that's just something. You'll often hear it talk about in, in tech world and you don't want to dismiss it because, oh, that's just in the tech world and I'm not a tech. So therefore, I don't need to, don't need to think about lean startup. I'll just do this other stuff, whatever it is. Um, all right, so how it helps you get started, one. It helps you focus. As an entrepreneur, it's very easy for us to have shiny object syndrome. That is, uh, I, I'm getting interested in this thing, and now I'm going to go over here and get interested in that thing. And I've got this product or this service that I want to do, but now I'm learning about Facebook ads, and I have to learn all about Facebook ads to understand. This Lean Startup will help you focus uh, on, on your mission, on your, on your goals, and get your some stuff done, right? Uh, it will also help you actually do something. It will help you do something because you can't just think all the time. All right, the Lean Startup helps you get something done quickly so that you can get into the market and get some feedback and start iterating, start changing and getting better. 
So the cycle of your business should follow this same cycle of a lean startup all the time. You want to be constantly, you're building a, a product or service or market. You are measuring how well that is accepted by the market and you're learning from the, the information that comes back from that. From that learning, you you adapt, you build something that's new and different. Maybe it's a slight pivot. Maybe it's a, a minor tweak. Maybe it's a wholesale change. But from the learning, you build something new, you measure the response to that in the industry, and then you learn from the, those measurements. See how that works. It's a great cycle for you to continually learn and continually grow your business. Um, don't ever think that what your product or service is just going to go into the market and it's going to solve everyone's problems and that's going to be it. It's going to be perfect because it's just this one thing and yay. That's, that's not the, just not the way life tends to work for us, folks. Um, all right, I'm going to wrap this one up and we will start the next module talking a little bit more in depth about MVPs from the Lean Startup.